Hello and welcome back to our Bandit Lord Challenge. And I gotta say, thank you so much. I, I was actually blown away by the amount of support that, are, that I received in the comments section of the previous video. And I gotta say, wow, I, I was left speechless, absolutely speechless. And I, I cannot say thank you enough to uh, those of you that left a comment. Really very much appreciate it. Um, yeah. We're, we're, we're just going to do, we're just going to do whatever we can to have as much fun as possible. We're going to explore as, as best we can in, in regards to the mod. And we're going to try to exploit anything that, uh, anything that crops up. In other words, you know, we're going to be as much of a criminal scoundrel as we can. And uh, first of all, we're going to have to win this tournament because there is actually a camel up for grabs here. Not sure if the camel is actually going to be any good because let's face it, it is... Maybe not going to be as good as, uh, for example, a noble horse. Probably won't be that good. But, um, you know, it's all right. It's absolutely fine. However, what I have actually done is I've increased my companion capacity. So every single uh, clan tier that I get now, every single clan tier is going to give me two additional capacity uh, to companions. So that basically means that I'll be able to increase my, my own territory... Um, relatively nicely and so we're not going to be limited to just having one town that we we have full control over because for me personally I feel like the base game and the way that the base game does things with companion limit I think it is a little bit too limiting um, for me personally I think that's the case but obviously you can decide whatever you want to do if you're playing the game as well or if you're playing alongside me or whatever you can of course change this to whatever you like and I'm using Chaos's tweaks to be able to change the, the companion limit. So I basically just selected, uh, what, what, what is it now? Two additional companions per clan tier. And that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah. And then I also sent off a bunch of messengers to the various people that actually have roguery skill in the world. And I have a bunch of them in my party right now. I'm actually going to show you them in just a second. And uh, let me just have a quick look and see what I can sell this. Mm. Yeah, as I expected, the camel is not going to sell for a huge amount, but we are going to sell it anyway for 4,400. Seems pretty decent. It's okay. You know, it's not a terribly bad amount to, um, to walk away with, I guess you could kind of say. Anyway, so as you can see here, we have Eilina the Swift, Duane the Prince, Hasawa the Lepidus, and Melissa Longknife. And they all have very good roguery, as you can see. Uh, Hasawa actually has 100 in roguery. Melissa has 62. And Dwayne has 142. What a crazy amount. I'm actually thinking that I might replace our current paymaster with Dwayne. Because he has 142 and roguery is pretty much the only thing that we really need here. So I'm thinking that that's probably going to be the way we'll do things. And I'm also at seven criminal raising at the moment. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to increase my weekly cost. We're going to be spending 6,000 here. But in my opinion, this is very much worth it. Because what we're going to do is I'm actually going to lower this. Our criminal rating is going to be... Um, uh, should I pay nothing? Yeah, paying nothing doesn't really make that much difference. What about moderate? Moderate seems all right. Yeah, moderate is 4,800. I guess that's okay. We'll just do something like this. And uh, yeah, I don't actually know if someone is going to be better at the enforcer role than what we currently have. It doesn't look to be that uh, be the case that that will happen. Because as you can see, every one of our people doesn't have any tactics. So it would probably be a good idea to just leave our current fellow there. And hopefully that's going to work out quite nicely. So yeah, so now that we've done that. We want to try and figure out whether we can infiltrate somewhere else. So what about Maranath? I don't think we've actually taken Maranath or anything like that. So, oh yeah, there's actually another person that I sent off a messenger to too. So we're going to just get him as well. Why not? It sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Anyway, let me see. Uh, these guys are probably going to need some upgrades. Yeah, they're going to need some pretty significant upgrades. These fellows do not have any in riding skill as far as I can tell. So I'm basically just going to be keeping them on foot as much as possible. And we're going to try and get them some shields as well, as you might expect. It's probably going to be pretty useful for us to do that. I'm also going to be uh, equipping them with uh, good civilian gear or as much good civilian gear as I can. 
I don't think she has any writing skill. She has 20 in writing skill, so that is, again, kind of useless. Hasawa, on the other hand, I think does have... No, no, she doesn't. She actually does not have writing skill. So, yeah, all of these new people do not have any writing skill whatsoever. This guy has amazing throwing skill, hilariously enough. So he's probably going to be super, super good for, um, you know, thrown javelins and things like that. That's going to be super fun to see. And otherwise, yeah, let's continue onward. There's some forest bandits right there, but we obviously don't want to fight them, do we? No, we don't want to fight them. So let's just very quickly go into Maranoth here. As you can see, we are having two, two fellows that we have to deal with, but that shouldn't be too bad. So we're going to just do some really um, high, high, um, shall we say, risky maneuvers here. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, eh, I'm not a big fan of doing the robbery, actually, because I have to go all the way over to Sargot. But we're going to do it nevertheless. It's going to give me some pretty good relation with Mike the Lizard. I think that that is the fellow that we're actually going to be working with here. And hopefully that's going to work out nicely. Uh, otherwise, apart from that, we just kind of have to keep an eye on our uh, criminal rating within Batania. Because if it raises too high, then they're just going to declare open war against us. And obviously that's not something that I really desperately want to have happen. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do right now is I'm basically just going to leave my archers in a position like so. And we're just going to move my infantry to the back. And we're just going to speed things up because these looters are just going to come over here. And hopefully they're going to get murdered, as you can see. This is going to be super, super nice to see for, for once because... You know, there's been a lot of times where I've thought to myself, yeah, it would be wonderful if we could actually get our archers some experience. And while this is not going to be the most amazing experience possible, it is going to be much better than normal. And there we have it. A nice little bit of renown and influence for us as well. We can actually take some loot as prisoner. We can actually, actually take some good loot too. So that's not too bad. Anyway, let's go into the tavern here. Did we get some level ups? Yeah, look at that. 19 people actually leveled up, surprisingly enough. Who would have thought that? And, um, yeah, I will be attempting, at least, to become a vassal very soon. All right, wait a minute. Okay, so shall we try a little bit of something here? I'm not going to pay any money to distract any of the additional guards. So we're going to see what happens here. Uh, I'm going to just go for the money, 4,500. Wait a minute. That was it? Oh, okay, okay. Um, apparently they didn't even want me to go into the keep, so apparently me paying the 3000 beforehand made no difference whatsoever because I literally just circumvented that. I actually don't even know whether that was meant to happen. I don't think so. <laughs> I, think, I think I was meant to be attacked by multiple people, but apparently they, um, they decided not to. Maybe we had already cleared it out or something like that. I actually have no idea, but... Yeah, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Okay, I was wholeheartedly expecting to get absolutely murdered from, you know, here to eternity because, let's face it, you know, we were, we were not paying. We were not paying for any assistance or anything like that to distract some of the enemies. And uh, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what happened. Anyway, there we go. We were able to achieve victory here, of course, as you might expect. I'm basically just doing this just to level up our forces. And just to get a, a bunch of quick uh, quick little little bits of cash and, and loot and influence and all that stuff. And also the forest bandits are getting stronger. Basically, any single time you attack someone nearby to the hideout or attack enemy looters or bandits or something like that, you're probably going to be gaining some relations. So that's pretty nice. Otherwise, we're just going to do a small little scam here. Do we have 40 with him? No, we do not have 40 with him. I could do the insurance scam. We haven't done the insurance scam before. So this is going to be kind of fun. A bandit party has been hired to attack and destroy it. Once the dirty job is done, attack the bandit party to eliminate any suspicion. Right. Okay. So is this the one that I actually need to do or... I'm I'm actually not entirely sure now. Uh, yeah, it's not actually a task. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There it is. Okay. So there are the looters that we need to take care of. And wow, they, they've actually got a pretty significant <laughs> army here. Okay, they've got 49 of them. All right, uh, this, this actually should be quite fun because we haven't done one of these before. So let's actually see if we can uh, do a relatively similar thing to what we've been doing so far where I basically just put my archers here and then just try and dominate with them. 
And uh, maybe I'll be able to get a, a little bit of throwing weapon skill as well. Nice damage. Look at that. Can we get some more of that, please? Yeah, not bad. Okay, yeah. K killing horses, not exactly what I'm attempting to do here. But, you know, if it does get them slightly less mobility, then I guess that's fine. But I would prefer not, if at all possible. I would prefer to actually just, you know, get kills. There we go. Nice. There's another kill. There's a little bit of damage. Yes. Br oh, Bruce leveled up. Very nice. That's exactly what we want to see. And how are my forces actually doing? They don't seem to be doing terribly well so far. Mostly because they are, of course, going to be dealing with a lot of enemy cavalry. And you can imagine that enemy cavalry for archers is probably not going to be the best thing ever. Is it? No. Not going to be the best thing at all. Can we actually... Oh, this guy's doing an amazing job at, at at blocking us, surprisingly enough. Wouldn't have expected him to be able to block so well, considering he's just a regular mounted ransacker. Shouldn't really be someone that will have amazing amounts of defensive options, but okay, he was able to do a pretty good job there. Anyway, let me see if I can actually kill this fellow. He's on, uh, he's on the horse archer spree, isn't he? Yes. Hmm. Yes, it seems like I'm getting a little bit unlucky here. Uh, or in in my case, maybe I'm just literally not able to even get towards the enemy. You know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens where I just cannot get into range with any of my abilities, any you know, any of my attacks, thrown weapons, bows, crossbows, whatever I've used in the past as well. Sometimes it just never happens. But look at this, 26 influence, 10 renown. Very nice to see that. Let's see if we can actually just go in for a nice little auto resolve here. And technically what I could do is I could rescue the Batanian caravan master, but I'm actually not going to do that. I did say that I would be rescuing prisoners every single time, but I actually don't feel the, the need to do this right now. I'm actually wanting to have a bit more uh, a bit more bandits in my army at the moment because obviously this is the bandit lord challenge and if i do have the option and i need troops and i have a garrison or something like that then i will definitely be taking these kinds of units but as it stands right now i'm not going to do that just purely for the fact that we do have a pretty good supply of bandits right now i think i'm going to be able to uh, pretty much recruit from the forest bandit hideout nearby to maranath quite simply not too bad anyway there we go um my criminal rating has increased as you can see we're um we're, we're spending about four thousand every single week which is actually not even entirely bad because it is a weekly wage it makes a huge difference to your overall um longevity and things like that so it really makes a huge difference so we don't actually have to worry about anything going wrong because we can pretty much just do whatever you know we can do whatever for the week we can get as much money as possible in that time and then we can just have a whale of a time from there which is actually exactly what we want isn't it yes we want to have that freedom all right so we're just gonna lock this apparently i have to lock these things individually so that they don't actually equip themselves with mounts and we'll just get a couple of extra pieces of gear here uh, yeah, there we go. Let's do that. There we are. And everyone's looking pretty good. And we don't have any shields right now, which is kind of unfortunate, but can't really do much about that. Uh, I could do larceny, which would be pretty easy, but I actually want to do grand heist or something like that. I think that would probably be pretty good. I did level up, however. So I'm thinking, shall we go for some leadership now? I think it would probably be a good idea for, to go for some leadership. And we probably do want to go for some social. Because I do have nine in cunning right now. So I don't think I really need much more than that. So I'm going to go for one in social here. Most likely because I just want to get leadership leveled up. I need to get to veterans respect. Because this is going to allow us to convert bandits into regular troops. And that's going to allow us to create these wonderful armies of noble units. As they have advanced all the way from the lowly dregs of criminality all the way up to nobility and murdering everyone in sight, because that's what we want. So let's have a look-see here. All right, no, I'm actually good. I'm going to try this without any backup whatsoever, okay? This is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit more of a challenge than normal. And here we go. Let's do this. Okay, so, oh, I can actually select a bunch. I, I won't take Eileen. I'll take all the ones that have um, relatively good HP. 
and uh, we'll we'll head straight on in. Okay, so I do have thrown weapons. How many enemies are we actually fighting against? I can't tell. Oh. Okay, hello. <laughs> uh, okay, this might be this might be bad. I'm just gonna try and do as much damage as possible here. Oh th yeah, this is bad. This is bad. Okay. Ha oh, hello. Okay. Ooh, this is not good. All right. Um, how many people behind me? Uh, actually, uh, they're pretty far. Okay, I need to get to even ground. That's that's the problem here. I need to get to even ground. Uh, can I jump over here? They're using thrown weapons against me. Well, that's not very nice. Oh, there we go. Oh, you. You absolute scoundrel that he's using thrown weapons. I did not mean to do that. Okay. I was hoping, you know, I was really, really hoping. Oh, well, never mind. Okay. Well, we don't really lose much for this, unfortunately. I mean, my criminal rating did actually. Okay. Uh... <laughs> they did actually take me prisoner. Are you serious? Did they steal all my stuff? No, they didn't. Okay, they didn't steal all my stuff. Okay, I'm actually kind of happy about that. Decreased morale shock. Apparently, I got a banner for some reason. How did I get that? I have no idea, but... All right. Okay, so I did actually get myself taken prisoner right there, but that's absolutely fine because, let's face it, you know, we were... <laughs> we were doing some pretty unscrupulous things, weren't we? But yeah, my criminality has now increased significantly, so I will have to return to Dunglanis now. Oh, that was so close as well. If only my own forces had just been able to kill a couple more enemies, then I think we would have been... We would have been all right, you know? We would have done okay. But as it stands, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to return here and then lower my estimates. Anyway, we can now actually get an additional worker at the gambling den, which is actually going to give me a little bit of extra money. And uh, I should probably get some more smugglers, I guess. Get some more smugglers... And I think that's pretty much all I can do. Um, yeah, we're, we're still going to be hemorrhaging money a little bit here. We're going to be losing 5,000 every single week, which is, of course, just how it goes. But yeah, anyway, we're just going to attempt to once again finish off Mr. Mike the Lizard's relation. So I guess the best thing I can possibly do is maybe notable extortion. I think that's not particularly bad. It seems pretty easy for us to do that, and we don't really have to... Uh, worry about it too much so we're just going to go straight on in there and do that there we go give the locals a lesson and yeah here we go let's see uh we're going to do this one um hmm should we do this one or should we give ah uh, we could we could take more we could take more actually relation with the gang leader is plus two plus four no 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 we'll, we'll, we'll just do pay me the full amount pay me the full amount there we go and he's actually increased now look at that he has increased to 40 which is absolutely perfect because that means I will now be able to do the gra the, ga 
I was going to say the grand trial, but no, no, it's the gang trial. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do throwing knives. Uh, because obviously, as someone mentioned, the throwing knife um event is actually pretty uh pretty easy because you can you know as i say you can either if you win in the throne weapon contest then that's absolutely great but if you don't and you just waste the enemy's uh throne weapon ammunition you can then switch to melee and then just murder them because they have no melee weapon themselves and uh generally i'm obviously doing a pretty decent job of hitting this guy in the neck and in the head as you can see right there and he just goes flop, and he has done his duty and failed very, very heavily, just like me. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm actually going to be claiming the streets this time. I will be claiming the streets, and I will say, I took, I took his smithy? <laughs> what? I took his smithy? I had no idea that you could do that. Okay, that's actually amazing. Okay, so apparently, if any of the the gang leaders or the criminal elements in a various town has a uh, has an enterprise apparently you can actually take that over i had no idea are you sure you want to expand your territory here you can switch your main base from dunglanis to this town at any time in the criminal enterprise menu all right there you go so we did it fantastic okay so we now have the ability to um well we've we've taken it basically we've taken it um, you dominate the streets of this town, owning the three areas. All right. Um, is, is there anything else that I can do here? No, apparently not. Okay. I actually thought that I needed additional companions to be able to man it, but maybe what I need to do is go over to the criminal enterprise menu, like they just mentioned, and actually do that through Dunglanis. Thankfully, they're super, super close by, so I should be able to do that through here. We're just going to take back the one little place that we, uh, that we lost just now. And uh, let me have a look-see. All right, so this is the main base, and there's Maranath. Make your main base. So technically, I can make that my main base, and then I could put some people there. So I think that's what I'm actually going to do. Oh, only available in your main base in Maranath. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, okay, mm. not sure how that's really going to work, but let's have a look, because obviously I've made Maranath my main base now. I, I'm hopeful that Dunglanis will still be giving us some cash, because if not, I'm going to be spending about 10,000 in my upgrades. But there's the main base. Okay, so now we can assign some people. So let's assign Darim. Oh, no, not, not Darim. He, he, he's, he's, a, he's a friend of ours, isn't he? So Hasawa will be the paymaster here. And then uh, Eilina, Eilina, I guess. Eilina will be the enforcer. And there we have it. Okay, look, and now we have a town network, and this is what we've got going on here. So this is fantastic. So basically how we do things is to do this kind of thing, we need to change our main base uh, and, and, and who's associated with that. So in other words, we still have Dunglanis, and we still have the Paymaster and the Enforcer and all those people over there, but you need to then select that and you need to change change your main base. You see, you need to change your main base. But you can leave your companions there anytime and then you can come back and get them at any time as well. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that a great deal. All right. So yeah, now, now we have another base, which is absolutely fantastic. So that means that we are in very, very good hands here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything's everything's coming up. Uh, everything's coming up, Bruce, right now. Pretty nice. Okay. Yeah. So apart from that, we have a bunch of mounted pillagers, mounted ransackers, and so on and so forth. And I'd actually like to sell them if at all possible. I think I will, I, I probably will sell them. Uh, should I? Should I actually sell them? I mean, that's the thing. If I do the manual laborer quest, I could get much more money. And obviously, money is very important. Need help with brigands, extortion by deserters. Both of these are obviously fantastic tasks to do but not sure if i really want to do those right now is there a task over here at the iron ore village if there is it might be a manual labor request no there isn't okay well that's very sad indeed isn't it oh well never mind okay so how close am i to the next clan tier i'm actually i'm, I'm only 150 and you say only 150 but technically if you think about it that is uh just 15 tournaments it's just 15 tournaments. It's actually not even not even a significant number. Anyway, we're just going to spec a couple of our people right now. 
because Cadfin has actually leveled up. Amazingly enough, we're just going to go for Virile because it doesn't really make much difference, to be honest. Uh, let me see what else we have here. Yeah, we're just going to go for Virile with Dwayne here as well. Uh, I don't think anyone else has anything spectacular. So yeah, we're just going to be heading on in, doing a little bit of a scam here. And we're going to see who who is um, who, who am I going to be working with here? Uh, seems like I'm going to be working with... Wow, these guys have literally... <laughs> Look at this guy. He's got no power. He has no power whatsoever. Look at him. He's got literally zero power. And the other guy has 55. I have no idea what's even going on with the, with these fellows. Um, I, I mean, I guess I could do Larceny. Yeah, we could just... Yeah, yeah, let's just get let's just get 10 relation with this guy. And we'll just pick the pocket a little bit. We'll just go straight on in to the tavern. Just do the, the pickpocketing thing. It's going to be super easy for us to do that. And then we should be done in no time can't, can't pick the pocket of the tavern maid as you might expect townsman got some more people right here there we go and we've already done it okay fantastic look at that super nice and easy and we only gained four relation for that but it literally took me like no time at all let's ransom all my prisoners while i have the ability to do so we could do a robbery might be a nice idea to do a robbery so let's go ahead and do that i'll try to um <laughs> I'll try to redeem myself a little bit, shall we? Yes, I will try to redeem myself just a slight amount, and uh, then we'll see what happens. As you can see, I'm actually spending 10,000 for the upgrade bonus at the moment, and I'm only gaining 3,500 from our various businesses, which is obviously not exactly great. Epicrotia was under siege just now, so I obviously couldn't head in to speak to my <laughs> speak to my contact, and they literally went in again just now. Ah, uh, that was funny. I was just about to head inside, and then they were like, no, 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 you can't head inside just yet. Yes, they're probably going to get attacked in a second, the Batanians at least. I mean, I could assume. Are they? Are they just going to leave them alone? There's only 516 here, and the Empire has well over 600, 700, and maybe even 800 units. Not entirely sure what's even going on there, but... Ah, there we go, they finally left. All right, so that's perfectly fine. Let's go in here and i'm gonna say i'm good i don't need any assistance let's see if we actually have an attack once again okay so we do have an attack this time around and i should be able to defeat these guys oh okay uh, oh okay okay apparently that guy knows what's up apparently he knows what's up and apparently i should not be doing that without any assistance because i am just that bad right clan argaros is now holding a stronger grudge against you oh no Okay, uh, yeah, well, that's not particularly good, is it? Oh, well, I can't really do much about that, unfortunately. So let's just go and pick some pockets, shall we? Yeah, let's just go and pick some pockets. This is going to be super easy to, for us to do. Look at how many people are actually here. Yeah, this is going to be super nice. There we go. There we go. All right, nice and easy. Yeah, so unfortunately i am not having very much luck with the robberies right now so i think i'm probably going to stay away from those in the near future unfortunately as well sturgia is not currently at war against anyone as you can see right here so i can't actually participate in vassal battles anyway technically what i could do is i could go and raid a village and i could probably have a pretty easy time of things raiding a village like that um but i don't know whether I really want to do that right now. We have more larceny here. Should, should we win any fight? Start a brawl in the tavern. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did that one time and that was very funny because we actually had the person with us just pull out their weapon and then just murder. So let's have a look here. Uh, don't like your face. Yes. Get him. He pulled, he pulled his weapon. He pulled his weapon out. He actually had a weapon. That's hilarious. Okay, yeah, so we won that, and we gained four relation. Now I should be able to do other things, or I am actually wounded, so I can't I can't do other things, unfortunately, right now. But hopefully I will be able to soon enough. There we go. All right, so let's, uh, let's do... Uh, actually, Grand Heist might be kind of fun. Yeah, let's do Grand Heist, and we're just going to literally get some people to help us out, because let's face it, you know, it seems like I kind of need the help for some reason. You know, usually I'm actually okay with fighting one versus many in, in many different aspects, but this time around, for some reason, these kinds of enemies are just kind of getting my number. They're just dialing my number in super accurately and just being able to murder me without too many difficulties. But thankfully, we do seem to have some pretty good units here, and we have now achieved victory. There we go. Yes. 
And we are going to, of course, have to pay a pretty significant amount in tribute to the people that helped us. But that's absolutely fine because look at the amount of relation that we get from this. It's actually pretty significant. We also have the ability to do this, which is the insurance scam, of course. And we're just going to wait for this caravan to be attacked. We need to wait for them to actually be attacked and killed. And then we need to go over here and tackle these bandits. Here we go. This is actually a fantastic, by the way, this is one of the best ways that you can probably do anything in regards to the manual labor request or in regards to getting um, getting easy prisoners. Because you just see exactly what's happening here. Like we're getting on demand, basically a caravan ambush mission. This is just completely on demand. We can we can demand it any time from any of the towns. And in my opinion, that is amazing. That is priceless. That is one of the best things that you could possibly do. And I got to say, I'm very impressed by this mod. I was impressed by it before when we played the Bandit Lord series beforehand. And I'm impressed with it even more now. And it's it's just a testament to the modding community once more. And it's funny because there are so many of these mods out there and it's just so so good it really is and i'm talking about you know not not criminal based mods or, or bandit based mods or anything like that but i'm talking about mods in general you know mods in general are going to be such an incredible addition to the game and that's exactly the reason why i would love to see some kind of curated list of mods appear on the console version because the console version of the game i, I don't know how many people actually play the game on console but I know a lot of people from my comments section specifically have said that they're playing on console so I'm thinking well they must be a pretty significant number right must be quite a few so I'm thinking you know what just give the console players a curated list of mods and I'm talking about you know mods that are you know um, being worked in collaboration with the modding teams with the development team of of Tail Worlds of Bannerlord and then just implement these mods in the actual game as a, as a base as a base so you know give them give the modding teams a little bit of uh you know uh, compensation allow them to work on their mod in conjunction with the development team itself and then just you know improve the player experience that's basically what i'm saying here just improve the player experience for pretty much everyone involved because that's the thing even on pc if we were to have this kind of version happen, so for example, let's say that Chaos's Tweaks was fully implemented into the game. You can obviously decide if you want to, to disable it. You can disable it if you want to, I would assume. You know, you can disable it if you don't like any of the tweaks available. But if you do want the tweaks, then it just means that it's automatically implemented and you don't have to worry about installing it. You don't have to worry about crashes or anything like that. And you can just disable it at any time if you don't like it. And it improves the console player experience, it improves the PC player experience, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. These kinds of quality of life improvements could very easily be done, and they, they just need to reach out to these modding teams and just be like, hey, we're going to offer you compensation, you can work with us on, on your mod, and you can uh, get all of our resources, and then we can make something great together. You know, for example, I, I don't know whether you've seen this, but the Witcher 3, you know, the Witcher 3 came out with like a next generation upgrade. Not sure how good it is. I, I've, I've heard good things about it so far. I have heard good things about it. So I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? Why, why, why not just do something like that? Because the next generation upgrade actually did do a thing where CD Projekt Red, they actually approached a couple of modders and they said, hey, we'd like to implement your mod into our game. Can we do that? And then they they gave them compensation. They gave them compensation for that. They gave them credit in the game's credits. All that stuff. And uh, I thought that was actually really, really awesome. I thought that was really awesome because if it's a mod that actually improves the game experience, then I'm, I'm all for that. You know what I mean? And it just makes everything so much better for everyone involved. Because, you know, obviously players gain more from the mod being implemented then you don't have to you know go and install it yourself you don't have to finagle with all that stuff you know it's always kind of annoying to mod things sometimes dependent on the on the game of course um but yeah 
I always think that that's kind of awesome. Anyway, roguery skill has finally leveled up. We're at 150. What do we have here? Increase the armor provided by civilian body armors by plus 10. That could actually be kind of useful. When you have any amount of criminal raising, you suffer 50% less trade penalty. Okay, I think I probably want to do that. Because although Bandit Party is always offering to join us, that sounds absolutely amazing. But I'm kind of thinking that the 50% less trade penalty is probably going to be even better. I mean, 50% less trade penalty, I'm going to get so much money from that. And all things considered, Bandit Party is always offering to join me. That's super powerful as well. But I can easily just get Bandits. I can get bandits from other places. So I'm just going to take the 50% less trade penalty. I'm hopeful that that actually means that I'm going to be able to sell things at a much higher rate rather than the barter screen with other people being a better value. Or at least I can hope that that is the case. Anyway, when you clear a hideout, you gain three relation. If it is you, increase town loyalty. Reduce item barter penalty with the lords of the same culture with you by 25%. Or hiring mercenaries is 20% cheaper. Reduce item barter penalty with the lords of different culture. I mean, I'm a Batanian. Um, yeah, I, I don't... I, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm not going to clear a hideout ever because I'm a bandit lord, of course. So I guess I'll just take Slick Negotiator in that case. Increase mounts top speed. Yep, definitely going to be taking that. Thank you very much. And there we have it. Okay, so I'm actually pretty happy with this. Now we can actually do the gang trial if we want to, which is exactly what we're going to do, because I'd like to take over this town as well. Yes, yes, we are going to, do, we are going to take over this town too. Actually, should we? <laughs> is it even necessary for me to take it over? Because let's face it, I'm not sure if it's even worth it. Maybe it's not even worth it. Anyway, we'll see, I guess. Uh, this guy's not going to be that good. I don't think we should be able to win this relatively simply so many knives sticking in him right now oh wow yeah it's it's literally the curvature of his body as soon as he as soon as he goes to shoot something or throw something shall we say it is making him avoid my attack ah oh, that, that was very funny all right so there you go we actually did achieve victory there and we can now... I think we're going to take it over. I think we're going to take it over. We took his wood workshop from him as well, which I think is pretty cool. And let's do it. There we go. I'm just going to scam real fast before we move on because I'm obviously going to be heading on to Maranath and then we're just going to make Sionan our main base. Then we can head back over here and we can install some, some companions and that's going to be great. So here we go. Yep, yeah, there we are. That's fine. And we're going to change our main base over to Sionan. There he is. Okay, great. And I need to go over there to do that. There we are. All right. And obviously, in the meantime, uh, we're actually gaining, uh, we're gaining upgrade points. We're gaining, you know, gaining huge amounts of upgrade points as I'm doing this. Look at this. I've got eight upgrade points right now, which is actually kind of incredible. And we have two people that can actually become the people that we want to do. So there we go. Wonderful. Look at that. So now I have six towns. As you can see, Sionan, he, <laughs> Sionan is not doing very well, as you can see, in regards to the amount of money that we're making. But I don't really mind that so much. I really don't mind that so much. And uh, yeah, I actually have 10 criminal racing in Batania at the moment, which is... I think not bad, but I would like something a little bit better than that, to be honest. I'd like something a little bit better. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to wait one more week. We're going to wait one more week, and then we're hopefully going to be able to... Uh, hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to, you know, just start increasing the amount of money that we're going to make. And uh, then we can have a whale of a time, to be honest. I'm just going to buy a bunch of hardwood right now because I'd like to do a little bit of smithing. Because someone actually mentioned in the comments that doing smithing orders is actually really good. Even if you fail, as far as I'm aware. So I'm actually very much looking forward to trying this out. Let's try and make a one-handed sword. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm never going to be able to do this, have I? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Weapon reach. Uh, this it seems okay, kind of. Uh, mm. Let me see here. Maybe I can make this better. Mm. Oh, wow. This is this is actually much more difficult than you might expect. Oh, no. 
Yeah, the, oh wow. Yeah, this, this is much more difficult than you might think. Okay, this is, this is the best, I think. This is the best. Yeah, that is pretty much all I can do. Yeah, you know what? We're just going to go for free build, and I'm just going to go for two-handed swords, because as it stands right now, it feels to me like this might be not really that useful right now. I'm thinking maybe what we want to do is just create a couple of things, and then in doing so, we can get some resources, maybe unlock a couple of parts, and then we can go on from there and see what we can do with that, because it would be rather nice to uh, maybe... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to have to change something here. This blade is going to have to be changed to... Oh, wow. I don't know whether I can even do that, actually. I'm going to have to change something else here. Which one, which one is actually causing me... It's probably the uh, the handle. Yeah, it is the handle. Oh, that's sad. That is very, very sad indeed. I would have loved to have been able to use that, but... Oh, well, never mind. Okay, yeah, let's just do a, a bunch of this. As you can see, we're just getting a bunch of these. That's absolutely fine. And we're just going to get to 120. Can I get to 125? Come on. Oh, really? 124? Okay, fine, fine. All right, let's just smelt every single thing that we have here because I do have a bunch of one-handed swords as well, and I might actually unlock a bunch of um, a bunch of parts, potentially. So let's actually go over to my one-handed sword. Yeah, as you can see, look at this. This is, oh, this is much better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not much better, but it is it is a little better, shall we say. Uh, yeah, th thrusting speed. Uh, yeah, the, the swing damage is the main problem here right now. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do anything. Where, uh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be so sad, isn't it? Okay, that is going to be real sad. Maybe we're just going to, I don't know, m maybe it's going to be good. Maybe we're just going to get a good amount anyway. So I'm just going to create it. As you can see, there you go. I did gain two smithing skill from that, which is actually not entirely bad. I can make a mace. Um, yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's... It, it's not going to be good, you know, it's not going to be good, but maybe I'm going to get, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm going to get something okay, I mean, maybe it's going to be alright, I, I didn't get any skill from that one, unfortunately, but I did get to 125, which is actually what I wanted to do in the, uh, in the first place, so, I guess that's not too bad, right, I guess that's not too bad, anyway, let's just have a quick look and see what we have here, oh yeah, okay, so stamina obviously is not that useful to me right now, but I am actually going to be, um, halving the refining, Stamina cost, that's usually the thing that I would want to do. And let's actually just take a quick look. Okay, I've, I've smelted everything. Let's just sell all my armor for 4,500. I only have 24,000, do bear that in mind, but that's absolutely fine because we are now starting to get resources. We're, we're starting to get resources to be able to craft these two-handed swords at a much better quality. So, for example, let's say I wanted to... Uh, let's say I wanted to create a bunch of these. They're, they're, these are going to sell for a lot, in my opinion. I think they're going to sell for quite a bit. So let's just do this. I want a two-handed only weapon, if at all possible. Can I do that? There we go. There's two-handed only. And then we can just do something like this. There we go. All right, so we're just going to craft a bunch of two-handed swords. There we go. And you know what I'm actually going to do? I actually want to show you something. I'm not sure if we're actually, you know what? I need to go over to uh, the Forest Bandit hideout because I need to actually get some additional Forest Bandits. So let me do that real fast. Uh, get some people. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get 20 of them. Going to get 20 Bushwhackers. There we go. We're now at 82, which is actually really nice. I am going to have to start donating some prisoners or um you know, items or whatever to the uh, forest bandits again because their their strength is really not good enough in my opinion. Look at that. Oh, Hasawa actually won the tournament at Maranath. Very nice indeed. That actually means that we gained 2,100 from that. Actually kind of surprising to be honest. And uh, otherwise, this is the thing that I wanted to show you a long time ago. Don't know whether I have enough. Yeah, this is pretty good. As you can see, look at this. 5,000 gold each and every one. Obviously, this is something you want to do much later on when you're able to create two-handed swords that are about 10,000 
each one. Okay. And you want to basically sell a huge amount of these to this particular uh, this this particular person. So this is the, the strategy that I wanted to show you a long time ago that I saw on a forum. I think it was the Steam forums or something like that. And uh, I thought, hey, I want to try this out because I think it's amazing. I think it sounds like a really, really fun idea. And I'm going to see if I can actually make this work. I need a I need a caravan, okay? I need a caravan to appear. So hopefully they're actually going to you know, come around. I don't know. I don't know where they are or anything like that. They seem to be taking their sweet time. Which is weird enough because I haven't seen one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen. Oh, oh there was one, but that's a Batanian one. Oh, that's a Vlandian one. Oh, well, this is problematic, isn't it? Uh, okay, fine. Oh, no, no, no. I'm. I, where are the Empire ones? Oh, there we go. There we go. We found one. Okay, fantastic. There's the Empire. Okay, um... Wow, now this guy is apparently much faster than I am. That is embarrassing, isn't it? That is absolutely embarrassing. Okay, yeah, so he's gone in there. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to catch up. Okay, apparently, I'm never going to be able to catch up to him. I can attack this one, though. <laughs> or not, as the case may be, because apparently they are just way too fast. Okay, so I'm just going to stand on this bridge then instead, because apparently I am so slow with my movement speed, that uh, I cannot catch anyone to save my life. But, uh, well, I mean, we do have to bear in mind that the, the caravans do have primarily cavalry units, so they are, of course, going to be much faster. But, yeah. Anyway, okay, there's a caravan, but we missed it once again. Ugh. Okay, ah, here we go, here we go. Hello there. All right, perfect. Okay, so um, I'm interested in trading. What kind of goods do you have? There we go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're literally just going to sell all of this, absolutely everything. And bear in mind, as I said to you before, it is a very good idea if you have a lot of swords right now, okay? A lot of swords. I'm talking about, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 swords, all costing around 10,000 to sell, maybe even more than that if you can handle it. And we're just going to say, boom, you can take all that stuff. And then we're just going to be attacking them. Boom. We're going to be attacking them straight away. My criminal rating with the Western Empire has increased. And we have now declared war against the Western Empire. Oh, no. Okay. This, you know, this, this, this is, uh, yeah, that's that's actually not particularly good. Okay. Hand over your goods or die. Let's do this. All right. So this is obviously to demonstrate this particular... Um, <laughs> this particular strategy. I'm actually hoping it's even going to work. Because now I'm now I'm worried. Now I'm worried that it might not actually even work, but uh, I can hope that it is. Anyway, we're just going to put my infantry out the front there, and oh, this is actually a really nice battlefield. I love this battlefield, but unfortunately, we're, we we may even end up losing this, to be honest. Okay, hit that guy. That was nice. Caravan guards are surprisingly good in Bannerlord in comparison to the previous game. Although they did level up into mercenary horsemen and things like that. So I suppose it's not all bad. Nice. Can we get some more though? Yes, we can. You know what I need? I need a big sledgehammer. <laughs> I need a big sledgehammer with which to use it on horseback because as you can see this mace, while it is a good mace for taking prisoners, it is certainly not designed to be used on horseback against enemy infantry. It is just far and away not long enough for that purpose but thankfully we were able to achieve victory here and there we, there we have it. Okay so 12 renown, very nice indeed. And we are able to take the prisoners, which is actually going to be pretty good because we will, we will be able to put those in with the uh, 
with the forest bandits so that's obviously going to be great but look look at what we have here look at this aha we've got some two-handed swords who would have imagined that we had some two-handed swords from this place and we are now actually going to be able to equip this legionary male as well which is actually going to be super nice and there we have it okay so now i'm actually just going to show you something look at my roguery skill you see my roguery skill yeah you see what happened? Did, did you see what happened? I mean, we were at 150, remember? We were at 150, and I just gained 43 roguery skill points just from looting four two-handed swords. I could, have, I could have obviously sold much more. You know, I could have sold, uh, dependent on how much money the caravan has, because obviously I'm pretty sure that what I should have done is I should have purchased all of their stuff to give them as much money as possible. And then I should have traded all of my swords back to them. And then I should have attacked them. That would have probably been the best course of action to take. But look at that, 43 skill points. Now bear in mind, the thread that I saw was detailing that this particular strategy was, uh, was actually able to be used with um, with roguery being pretty low and then it, it would just skyrocket you all the way to uh 250 300 maybe even more than that in roguery skill because obviously if you do it properly if you do it with a good good value of two-handed swords and the enemy has a lot of money with which to buy your two-handed swords you're going to be in a really really good position so that's just something to let you know about and that's the, that's the strategy that I actually wanted to show you. So hopefully uh, you can use that in your own games if you're uh, so inclined as to do that. And I'm actually going to be going for leadership here once again. I have 193 in roguery now, which I'm actually really pleased about. And uh, yeah, otherwise, apart from that, I got my two-handed swords back. So technically, <laughs> and this is what's, what's actually really funny about this whole thing. Technically, what I can do now is I can find another caravan, and I'm talking about another caravan from the Northern Empire, of course. I can find another caravan. I can do a little bit of a trade agreement with them if they are going to allow me to do that. And then I can do the same thing again, and I can get more, more roguery skill from any random party. And uh, yeah, so that's the kind of thing that you can technically do, which is actually pretty awesome in my opinion. But um, yeah, as I say, it is, uh, it's a little bit of trial and error because obviously this is the first time I'm actually doing it. And I thought, oh yeah, you know, it's, um, yeah, it, it actually worked out quite nicely. Not too bad in my opinion. Anyway, here we go. We're going to be getting 215 strength from giving away all of these. And we're going to give away some stuff as well. Let's give away a little bit of stuff right here. Let's give away some of this. Oh, wow. Look, look what? <laughs> okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much do I actually... Do I not get much for, for giving away this? Apparently, I don't get much for giving away that. All right, well, yeah. As you can see, if I give away my two-headed swords, they are literally worth, from a base cost, of they, they are worth 22,000 from a basic cost without any trade penalties and stuff like that, which actually makes me think to myself maybe i should try to get some trade skill because obviously trade skill does reduce your uh yeah as you can see sell price penalty for equipment and things like that so that actually could be really really useful for us too anyway we're going to be taking the 2.5 percent movement speed bonus in my opinion that sounds like a great idea i do need morale higher than 75 though so obviously there's a bit of a stipulation on that but shouldn't be too bad Anyway, we can go straight on in here and we can sell these. As you can see, they now sell for 7,700 because my sell price penalty has been reduced by 50% because of my criminal rating. Beforehand, I don't think I actually had a criminal rating. So that was the reason why my swords were selling to the caravan for 3,300 or somewhere around there. So I can actually sell all of these now for 31,000 if I want to. We can also sell my armor for 10,000, but obviously I'm not going to do that. Bear in mind, most of my uh, most of my units are actually using one-handed swords. So me giving them two-handed is not really going to work out too well. Um, but I, don't don't worry. I, I will probably be making them a one-handed sword or a good one-handed sword. Or I'll buy them a good one-handed sword at some point in the future so you don't have to worry about their uh, 
their equipment being terrible or anything like that. Because you can see here, they've actually got some pretty decent stuff. Why am I discarding all of this? I thought I was actually in the uh, the marketplace. I wanted to sell them. There we go. All right. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's uh, another episode down for the Bandit Lord Challenge. And hopefully we're going to be able to... Uh, maybe, maybe I'll try a little bit more. You know, maybe I'll try a little bit more uh, engaging with the Western Empire. Because obviously... They don't actually have anything on us because we are a criminal. We have no base. We have no fiefs. We have no units. We have no vassals. We have nothing. And so the only way that they can really attack us is by attacking us themselves personally. And if they want to try and hunt us down, then they are welcome to try. Let's just say that. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and for your support. And I'll see you next time.